So welcome to day two. Today I'm going to kind of continue on from yesterday's workshop and I really want to home in on, you know, um, inspiration, sources of inspiration because, you know, that's the actual, um, that's where all the magic happens really. It's that inspiring thought that, you know, gets that whole process going in the first place. So, you know, I touched on a couple of examples yesterday, one of them being nature. And you know, there's so many famous artists, famous designers, famous architects who get their ideas through nature. You know, Leonardo da Vinci used to use nature as an inspiration all the time. Um, artists like Monet, you know, Monet was so intrigued by the way the sunlight would hit the exact same object at different times of the day that he would sit there in a park and paint the same scenery um, multiple times throughout the day because you know he realized that you know dependent upon the way the sun was shining all of the elements combining around this picturesque scenery you know it really did have an impact in terms of color and in terms of the way the whole scene was viewed and he was mesmerized by this and you know he put it in his paintings and you know buildings like the Parthenon you know they were created out of inspiration from nature you know the Parthenon shows um, you know examples of divine proportion which you know I'll explain in another video to you guys so you know nature is all around us therefore inspiration is all around us now say for example you guys you go into a park and you see you know some flowers that are growing and the colors are beautiful and there's different types of flowers and you know you wouldn't have thought that certain colors would necessarily look so aesthetically beautiful so those are the moments that you know you really need to take heed of and you need to get your cameras out you need to photograph these these events because they're only going to source as inspiration for you for later on you know say for example you're a dancer and you know you've got a competition coming up and you need to put some costumes together you're not really sure about the colors you're not really sure about the textures nature is the place where you need to go to get your inspiration from okay so um point one nature now another way that you can source some inspiration is by you know collecting little memorabilia or photographs or you know holding on to some feelings that you have as a result of your journey through life now i'll show you my little box of tricks which i've had for geez probably over 10 years now and um you know since yeah way over 10 years since i was in college um you know this is one of my boxes of where i keep it's small and sweet where i keep you know stuff that is special to me stuff that when i look at you know it conjures up a certain feeling of that particular event you know certain places where i go and i think is absolutely beautiful i'll take my camera i'll take pictures and i'll save them and um, I'll just share a few with you. You know, this was when, um, I'll show you this one. This was when I went to Barbados and, you know, this scenery here, you know, it just conjures up such great memories for me. You know, I can actually feel that I'm there right now just by looking at it. You know, the colours, the whole kind of tranquility, that whole being at one with nature. And, you know, Barbados as an island itself, it's so vibrant, it's so cultural. You know, there's so many, um, so many different feelings that you can take away just from a photograph, let alone if you have this on video, you know. So, you know, here's another example, which is, you know, something completely different. This is um, a concert that I went to and, you know, I really like the kind of um, laser lights that were being used at this concert. You know, you can see some complementary colours in there. And that whole kind of feeling when you're in a concert and that kind of buzz, that experience, the atmosphere is just electrifying, isn't it? And, you know, everyone is there to view the artists that they love. This was Music Soul Child. And, you know, that whole feeling, these are the feelings that you need to be taking with you in order to create inspired thought. So, it's, you know, it's about using all of your senses. It's not just about looking and seeing what's, you know, visibly out there. It's about hearing what sounds conjure up certain feelings. You know, it's about being excited. It's about your feelings within you as well. So, you know, when you capture these moments, these are the things that when you look back on these pictures, these, you know, if you have any videos, 
um, those feelings, those memories, that's exactly what you, that place you need to be in terms of, you know, where um, inspired thought will come out from. Now, another thing I like to do is, you know, I like to think about memories of when my career first started. And, you know, there's little things that I've kept along the way that I knew would inspire me later on. And, you know, I remember one of my first design jobs was for an advertising agency um, based in London. And um, this was when um, new shopping malls were being built without, throughout the UK. And this was when um, plasma screen TVs were first introduced into shopping malls. So within this advertising agency, I used to design um, the plasma screen advertisements for all of the shops within the shopping malls. So one of them was um, The Gate, which is in Newcastle, and another one was um, the Ball Ring Shopping Centre in Birmingham. So, you know, what I did is I kept the actual branding guidelines and everything that um, the agency used to give me in order to get, you know, the branding guidelines correct and all of the colourways. And, you know, when I look back on this, I'm not looking at it from a branding guideline point of view. I'm looking at it because it conjures up feelings of excitement of, you know, wow, I'm, I'm a fresh professional designer now and, you know, I'm stepping into what I always wanted to do. So, you know, things like this can really, you know, they can really help with the whole creative process. So, you know, another thing that I do is, um, you know, um, a lot of my work, the majority of my work, if not all of my work, is, you know, predominantly computer-based. So from time to time, I like to step out and, you know, get back to some real hardcore painting. <laughs> and you can see my roller brush here. You know, I love to paint. I love to draw. Um, it's about having fun. It's about being creativity, being creative. And, you know, like I said yesterday, it's about letting your inhibitions go and just being free and forward thinking and, you know, just, just having fun, really. So, you know, I've got all of these things that... You know, basically, each each thing helps in terms of, you know, that whole kind of development in terms of creativity. So, um, I really need you to, you know, put all of these elements together. So, go back to yesterday's creative workshop. When you're out today, be aware of the environment and, you know, nature and what you see, what you hear, what you feel. You know, when you're at home, go through some old photographs that you may have or old video and really take inspiration from the ones that really mean something to you. And, you know, I encourage you to keep a box like how I keep for, you know, the times that you need to go back and, you know, have a boost, have um, some kind of injection of um, inspiration for your creative thoughts. Now, I remember yesterday when I was basically telling you guys that, you know, one source of... Um, creativity is to start with the whole mind mapping and brainstorming technique. Now, um, remember, once you come up with your ideas, once you come up with your new business idea or your new product that you want to launch, you need to do research on whether or not this has already been established in the marketplace or, you know, what your competitors are doing in terms of advertising it, how they've developed it. But what I want you to do is I don't want you to go out and research first, yeah, because at the end of the day, all that's going to do is that's just going to, you know, um, you're going to have this kind of, it, your thoughts aren't going to be authentic. Your thoughts are already going to be contaminated by what is already out there on the market. That's not to say that, you know, what already, what already is out there is not good. I'm not saying that, but, you know, your thoughts need to be authentic. So you need to be in an authentic place, in an authentic zone when you're initially coming up with these ideas. So, you know, like I said, you know, if you're just sitting there with some friends, some colleagues, or if you're by yourself, and, you know, you're going through all of your secret box of treasures and you're doing your mind mapping. All of that is coming from an authentic place. It's, it's from you. It's from your own inspired thought. It's from your journey through life. So, um, you know, once you get to that stage, then you can go out and research. Research the standards that have already been put out there. Research, you know, if someone else has a similar idea, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. That all comes down to that whole kind of evaluation period as well. So, you know, you need to be thinking about everything on, on a larger scale. Think outside the box. Don't just think in terms of, oh, me, me, me. You need to think about what's already out there, how that can contribute to your work, what parts you want to leave out. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's only going to benefit you in the long run. 
So um, I hope you, um, you know, I hope you're inspired again by today's, um, by today's challenge, by today's video, and um, I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. So I hope you have an inspired day.